So it's just not on there. There you go. Okay, so it's eight o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. So we have two different presenters today. Um, we have Dr. Elizabeth Dahl, and she's a pediatric um, neurologist in residency right now. She's in her third of five years uh, rotating with us currently. Um, she comes to us from Kentucky, and she's going to talk to us about bariatric surgery and um, relation to the eyes. And then uh, when she's done, if uh, Dr. Olson comes, we'll go to Dr. Olson. So, all right. Hi, I'm Lizzie Dahl. I'm a third year neurology resident, and I wanted to thank the neuropomology team for letting me rotate with them last month. Um, today I'm going to talk about the ocular complications of bariatric surgery and particular focusing on uh, associated vitamin deficiencies. So first I'll talk about a patient who we saw in our neuro-ophthalmology clinic. Then I'll give a brief overview of some bariatric surgical options that are available. And then I'll discuss uh, potential vitamin deficiencies and their ocular counterparts, um, namely vitamin A, but also touching on vitamin E, thymine, and B12. And then I'll give the recommendations that we gave to our patient. So our patient was a 56-year-old woman with a history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, arthritis, renal cell carcinoma, status post-nephrectomy, and gastric bypass surgery, which had occurred 25 years prior and had required one revision. Uh, her chief complaint was vision changes at night for one year, although at the time that she, had, she was seeing us in clinic, she hadn't had any complaints for one month. Uh, she was a very detailed historian and perfectly described a central scotoma bilaterally. Um, she gave the example of camping in Montana last summer and she could not see the stars in her central vision uh, despite the, the sky being profoundly dark. Um, the symptoms had come and go, and like I said, at the time that she saw us, she wasn't having any eye complaints at all. Uh, she denied any eye pain or double vision. Uh, of note, she had started on Plaquenil one month prior to the onset of her symptoms. And uh, because of this, she was receiving regular ophthalmology follow-up. Um, she had normal visual fields and OCT to date. There was not ERG available in, um, in Idaho. So past medical history, as I've already discussed, uh, she was on a number of different medications, but I'll focus on the most important, which include Plaquenil, uh, multivitamin, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, and vitamin B12. Her family history was unremarkable. Uh, she did smoke cigarettes and used alcohol occasionally. She was disabled but worked part-time as a substitute teacher, and her review of systems was unremarkable. On examination, uh, she was 230 pounds. Her visual acuity was 20-25 on the right, 20-25 on the left, without correction. Her pupils were normally reactive without APD. Her visual fields were full to confrontation. Um, her extraocular movements were full. She had normal stereo and color vision. Uh, slit lamp examination was normal with the exception of one plus nuclear sclerosis in the lens bilaterally. And dilated fundus exam was also normal. So ancillary testing included flicker, Amsler grid, a multifocal ERG, OCT, and 10-2 Humphrey visual fields, all of which were normal. And here are her visual fields on the left and on the right, which were essentially normal. And then her multifocal ERG, which was also normal. So bariatric surgery works two ways, either through restriction and or malabsorption. So restriction 
decreases the amount of food that you can take in by decreasing the size of the stomach, whereas malabsorption uh, bypasses a portion of the small intestine to decrease the surface area available for absorption. Uh, the Ruin Y start up here is the most commonly performed and places the patient at high risk for uh, nutritional disorders. Um, the Ruin Y works by decreasing the size of the stomach through restriction and also um, bypassing the duodenum and proximal jejunum. And so, because of the malabsorption associated with these procedures, um, uh, you get impaired bile salt absorption and therefore um, impaired absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. So here is a, a diagram of vitamin A absorption, metabolism, and delivery to the eye. And so we ingest um, retinoids from animal products or beta carotene from green or leafy vegetables. It's esterified um, and absorbed um, from the intestines and delivered to the liver. Um, in the liver, it's hydrolyzed. It binds to um, retinol binding protein. And then from there, it's delivered to the eye. Um, so with bile salts, uh, or excuse me, with b bypass surgery, um, bile salt absorption is impaired and therefore um, fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A cannot be maximally absorbed. Uh, as we know, in the rods, retinol exists as 11 cis retinol, and then when a photon of light hits it, it undergoes a conformational change from 11 cis retinol to all trans retinol, and um, it creates a nerve impulse from the retina to the brain. So vitamin A deficiency is actually the leading cause of blindness worldwide, secondary to diet. But in industrialized countries like America, um, vitamin A deficiency more often results from uh, intestinal, intestinal malabsorption or uh, in alcoholics. Um, the primary ophthalmologic manifestation of vitamin A deficiency is xerophthalmia, which includes uh, xerosis, keratomalacia, nyctalopia, and retinopathy. So research on vitamin A deficiency def following bariatric surgery is limited and includes mostly case reports, um, essentially because it wouldn't be ethical to perform a prospective case study or uh, study with this. Um, Zalesson and his group in the Journal of Obesity conducted a retrospective study in 69 obese patients who had undergone the RUIN-Y procedure. And they looked at vitamin levels at six weeks and one year. Um, and at those two times, 35% and 18% were vitamin A deficient, uh, respectively. Uh, interestingly, uh, a low level of vitamin A correlated with a low level of uh, prealbumin, which um, suggests that their overall nutrition state was poor. Uh, this picture is from uh, ophthalmology. It was a case study on a 39-year-old woman who had undergone uh, the Ruin Y procedure um, 18 months prior and had stopped taking all of her um, vitamin supplementations. Um, you can see in the top photo that she has uh, conjunctival cirrhosis, um, keratitis, and corneal scarring. And then the bottom picture, she has a heavily keratinized surface and there's pooling of the fluorescein dye. So it's important um, to not forget the other um, vitamins um, that can potentially uh, be affected with bariatric surgery, which include vitamin E and that can manifest as retinopathy. Um, thiamine, of course, can lead, um, thiamine deficiency, of course, can lead to Wernicke's um, uh, and includes nystagmus, disconjugate gaze, and gaze palsies. Um, it independently can also cause ophthalmoplegia and nystagmus. And then vitamin B12 can cause 
um, a number of optic neuropathies, but pathognomonic is sequocentral scotoma. In our patient, um, we measured her vitamin A, E, and B1 levels, and her vitamin A level did come back low at 19 with a normal range of 38 to 98. And so we therefore recommended either increased oral supplementation or intramuscular um, supplementation of vitamin A um, on top of what she was already taking. Um, uh, her albumin, interestingly, was normal, um, so that suggests that she was um, nutritionally replete um, uh, from another standpoint. Um, we did also recommend that she discontinue Plaquenil. Um, although she did have normal ERG and uh, she, it was unlikely for retinal toxicity to develop within one month of uh, symptom onset, uh, we thought that the Plaquenil could have some added susceptibility to the symptoms that she was experiencing. Um, of note, she did have uh, normal renal function. Um, so when I talked to her yesterday, she had uh, discontinued the Plaquenil and uh, she was going to talk to her physician about um, getting on some kind of vitamin A supplementation. So that's it. Any questions? <laughs> Yes, sir. So she had you know, a completely normal exam, and at the time that she was seeing us, she didn't have any eye complaints at all. Um, but it was the night blindness, and then um, we measured her vitamin A level. So, well, yes. Yeah, so she's getting um, enough oral. I mean, for a normal person, she would be getting enough um, vitamins, but because she was having impaired bile salt absorption because of her bariatric surgery, then she wasn't able to absorb those effectively. So at the menu, you suggested that one of your recommendations was to give her oral Well, I mean, you could really max her out. I mean, I think giving her, like, super therapeutic oh. <laughs> doses of vitamin A. But uh, it does exist in an intramuscular form, which probably would be more ideal. I think it's amazing to me that it took her 25 years to develop that type of yeah. 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 Sure. And we don't really know which type of procedure she underwent um, 25 years ago, whether it was a ruin Y or some other one, but. Um, interesting case. Okay. Thank you.